I'd like to give a very warm welcome to the many people who are following this project. And this is the video many of you have been waiting for. The Spitfire Mark IX Throttle Quadrant. I'll do my best here, but if you find a certain lack of energy in my voice, it's because I'm running on fumes at the moment. I've been operating in WEP, War Emergency Power Mode, for the last 48 hours, determined to release this video and launch this product today. Because, of course, today is Spitfire's birthday. The old girl is 85 today. On March 5th, 1936, prototype K5054 took a maiden flight from RAF Duxford. There was no way I wasn't going to be ready for this. For those of you joining me for the first time, the aim of this project is to assemble a set of Spitfire Mark IX flight controls that you can use in any mainstream flight simulator. It's kind of a home cockpit, but the quick release system that comes with it means that you can take the controls out of a cupboard and clamp them to your desk or table in five minutes or less. First, I showed you how to build a spade grip flight stick with fully working cannon and machine gun buttons and an authentic brake lever that you would struggle to simulate on any normal joystick. A link to that build series is below. In my last video, I showed you how to make this elevator trim wheel. This is actually very easy to assemble. You really could put this together in 10 minutes or less. And this, my friends, is what we're making today. A throttle quadrant with air screw, throttle, bomb release, mixture controls, and a detent point on the throttle which indicates when you switch into war emergency power which overstresses the engine and should only be used in times of emergency. This is actually more complicated than the trim wheel, but if you can put an IKEA wardrobe together, you'll be absolutely fine. I'd actually recommend building the trim wheel first, then the quadrant, and finally the spade grip. If you are new to this, these are self-build kits. Some people are sourcing everything themselves and 3D printing parts using the free downloads from authentikit.org. Others are buying the kit from SimKit Supplies, who will help you also find a 3D print service. And we aren't stopping with Spitfires. As you watch this video, I think it will be obvious very quickly that the assembly method could easily be adapted to make a throttle quadrant for probably any vintage aircraft. And that is the plan. But for now, and especially today, this video is dedicated to the Supermarine Spitfire. OK, well, let's get started. Uh, notice anything different? Yes, we have assembly steps for the first time. I didn't have these for the flight stick and the, the, the spade build. There were a lot of steps there, but I've made an assembly list and I'm going to be following it. So let's just put that to one side and uh, we'll get started. So we are using mag holes again, but this time they are slightly different. We have mag hole 6803s. So, step one, we're going to make the mixture mag hole. Just put that unit together. So, hole sensor first. Let's slide that in. That's in place. And bend those wires back. There we go, that's good for now. Now we're going to fit a cork disc on that. This is a nitrile bonded non-squeaky cork disc. So you can see some little grooves around the edge here just to help you get that alignment because it just to get it central. There we go. That holds the whole sensor in place nicely as well. So this is a 6803 bearing. Let's slide the peg through that, put the cap on that and now we need to put the magnet in. So Remember the system for the magnet. We need to find out which way is north. Okay, that's north. Now we carefully hold that with the screwdriver, making sure it doesn't spin about. And there's a little dimple. And if we put that in, we're pointing the north at the dimple. Okay, let's just put these together now. And my handy notes tell me that I need 14 millimeter M4 countersunk screws. So we have three of those. 
Now we might as well just get this little D lined up in the right way to start with. So with the pins down, we basically want the D, it's already quite tight here, we want the D pointing round about up. And we'll get a little bit of tension, we'll sort that out later. Okay, that's one. Two more, just the same as that. Okay, we have three. That's three things ticked off. What a good start. Now let's take a look at the throttle lever. We need to run these two wires, the black and the yellow, down inside the grip and out of this hole here. They should go through fairly easily. A little bit of pushing and there we go. Okay, so let's just slide those through. Now we'll connect the fire button tact switch. Now these little legs often have a kink on them and I just squish them flat. That's going to be make, that'll make things a bit easier. With our fingers, just strip off a little bit of silicon. We're going to be using our much loved ferrule system to connect these. So we slide one of those on. Yeah, that goes on quite well. If it catches and just, just doesn't go on very easily, then give the wire a little bit of a twist and possibly just get a different ferrule. Some of these things are a bit badly chopped and, and have rough edges. So we put that on there and it should be yeah, quite snug to the point you can just <laughs> to the point that it just stays on. So I think I'll leave that in. The hours of edit that I have to take out. Right, so it won't just hang on by itself. What I'll do is I'll just pull that wire in a little bit. Okay, and get the other one on. Okay, so now we've got two on. Slide the yellow in carefully. And then these wires should drop into the channel. Yeah, now they're in and now we just give them a crush. Make a really good connection. Okay, that looks good. Let's just press this black wire down here. Make sure it's not obstructing anything. Okay, that's a good connection. Now you need a little piece of neoprene and you need to cut a small hole in it. Uh, it's an eight millimeter hole. The, uh, the dimensions of this are in the list of parts and it's an eight millimeter hole. Uh, you can, it's a little bit bigger than you can punch with a paper punch. So maybe paper punch it and then just open it out with some nail scissors or if you're getting the kit, it comes with the hole ready punched, just the right size. Okay, so that, that holds everything nicely in place. Now we have a fire button that sits on top. Uh, I think grey is better, but I didn't have time to make another one. And the lid of this bomb release simply screws on. Nice and tight. And there is our bomb release button. Now let's put these little things out of the way because they have a tendency to fly off the table and disappear into the carpet. This is an interesting step. We need to run these wires inside this tube. Now the tube's plenty big enough, but it tends to be a bit fiddly. It just sticks. So I've developed a little system that involves a little bit of craft wire. And what you need to do is this. Just get a piece that's plenty long enough for the tube, fold it over and twist it to make a little loop, a little noose in fact. Then take off a good amount of wire here 
twist these together to make one strand, put it through the noose and then twist that. And just pinch that tight so that that doesn't catch and then we can thread this through the silicon. The other thing you could probably do is put a little bit of washing up liquid or just something a little bit uh, greasy inside and that might make things easier but this works and just slide those through. Just There we go. Looks really easy doesn't it? Without that I assure you it was not easy. So now we don't need this anymore. Now we just need to push this silicon up and push it in the hole here. It does go in, just give it a little twist. You can't really see it go in, but it, it does. There we go. So that's there. Now we need to thread through this tube. Okay, didn't need anything greasy that time. It just pulls through. Pull it through till it's kind of like that. Almost there with this step. Now we slide on this P-clip. It goes that way so that it is I guess away from you, flat towards you and then the tube away from you. So that slides on, little twist to help that go. It's not as snug as the rest, that goes on a little bit easier. Right, that is done for now. Okay, we're moving along here. We're up to step eight. This is the back panel and that's the back box and the back panel and the back box go together like that and we need to do it now because we're going to cover over the screws with some felt in a second. I'm afraid this is a little bit grubby because I've built this already and tested it and then I had to peel off the felt and uh, you've got a bit of residue left. Yours will be clean off the printer. So I've made a note here, 10 millimeter screws is what we need Remember, some of these look very similar, so why don't I just check that I'm using 10 mil? It's not actually crucial in this case. Nothing will get damaged, but if you use the wrong one with these mag holes, you can damage something. So a couple of 10 mils. Very good. And it goes that way. That's one of them. Now let's talk about felt. We're going to be using these felt strips to guide the mixture and the throttle lever. Stop them having a kind of plastic scraping on plastic sound. And uh, they're shaped slightly differently. You'll get a strip of felt 50 millimeters wide in a, in a length. And then in the assembly guide, I have a couple of templates that you can kind of print and cut out. And there's two types. One of them is that sort of shape and one of them is a bit roundier and in fact you'll see if I put it behind it that we just end up losing a little bit off the top sort of a compromise that I felt was best so it doesn't have the complete round at the top we get a slight flat bit so those are the two types so I've cut them already on the back here we're going to be using the more angular one and it sits kind of low like that with the tops just coming up to these posts so let's peel that off. So let's peel off the back for that. It's not quite so crucial this one. 
Actually, more like that. Both screws are covered. And this line here is kind of along, running along the bottom of those two pillars. So that's one of those. And you can see now that we've covered over the screws to the back box. So let's connect the wires to the mixture mag hole. Actually, all three mag holes are identical, so this will do. We have the standard red, blue, white, which I always use. And we just slide a ferrule over onto a leg. Press it down and crush it into a channel. And I'll just tidy up the way the legs drop into the channel further up as well so that nothing is protruding. That looks okay. Okay. Yeah, that's good. That's red. Just press it into the channel and then crush it in. There we go. Now we will fit the mag hole to the back panel and run the wires through the guide tube. So, mag hole, back panel. It says six millimeters, which is very helpful. Okay, and now the guide tube. It's not too snug in here, this one isn't particularly tricky. There they are. Just pull those through carefully. Doesn't make any difference really. It's nice if they're orderly though, isn't it? Okay, that's a mag hole unit. Okay, we've done 10 and 11, let's do number 12, the mixture lever. That's a 6mm as well. Now this is where we can start to look at the friction. Don't worry about the felt friction now, just the amount of friction on the mag hole. A little bit more would not hurt. That's pretty good. Now this is where if you're using normal cork you might find it a bit squeaky, but this nitrile stuff is a lot better. Let's move on to step 13. Fit the wires to the mag hole number two, the throttle. This is just like the last one, red, blue, white, so I will just quickly do this and skip over it in the video. Okay, they're all in. That is the throttle. Okay, step 14 is also a wiring of a mag hole. But, remember the rule? Red, blue, white, always red, blue, white? No, I'm afraid it changes. Otherwise we'd get confused with all these red, blue, white wires coming out the back. So, this is red, black, green. RBG instead of RBW. But apart from that, it's just like the rest. R, B, G. There we go. That's 13, that's 14, and now we're on 15. So we fit mag hole 3, which is the prop one, or the air screw, to the prop back plate, which is that. And that is done with 10 mil screws. Okay, 10 mil in the back. So that's the mag hole to the prop back plate, 
and now we run these wires through these holes. Just pop these through carefully of course, we don't want to rip the wires out of the mag holes. Okay, that's done. That's 15 done. Number 16, fit the throttle mag hole, that's that one, to the front panel, which is this. Nice and tight. So that's throttle mag hole to the front panel. So let's put some felt on. This is one of the roundier ones. The roundy ones go on the throttle. They, they, they go where this particular, they go where this little ledge is. Now you can see there's a couple of indentations and we want to fit the felt between those and not cover any of that up. That'll do it. Alright, that's the felt on the throttle plate. We can now fit the throttle lever. And I'm just going to check on the friction first. Yeah, I think we can tighten that up a touch. A bit more like it. Okay, so that's a 6mm throttle lever to make hole. Okay, number 17. Thread the wires from the prop back plate through the front panel holes. That's these. So, let's put that there and pop them through. Okay, done. And now we can fit the prop back plate. And now we can fit the prop back plate to the front panel with three screws and two limit posts. So the three screws are these three screws here. Now uh, these are a different kind of screw. They are a round head or a pan head. And these longer ones go on the edges with this post and another on the other side and then a shorter round head in the middle so we can fasten those in okay that's held nicely so that's 17 done 18 done and we've done 19 okay now we are up to 20 run the throttle and the prop wires through the guide tube. Okay, that's this, the throttle and the prop. Now it's a little bit snug, but should go through easy enough. Okay, I'm getting there. Okay, that's good. I've just pulled these through a fraction more and that's fairly tidy. So we are now up to number 20. 21 next. We're applying more felt and this is the separator plate. It's a little bit gunky because I've had to put felt on and peel it off so that I could put it on again to show you in this video. Uh, there's a flat side and then another side which has got a slope and it's sort of got these very fine sort of terraces. That's how the 3D printing does a slope anyway. And on the terraced side, let's call it, my pre-peeled piece of felt here, we put the roundy one. So that goes quite high up. OK. 
Okay, that's where that goes. And on the flat one, the non-roundy one. And this sits at the bottom. And you just want to make sure that the little pointy bits at the top sort of sit between these little lug sticky out bits. So, like that. There you go. So that's how that goes. That's the separator plate with its felt on it. Now we're going to do some more wire threading. We're about to put these plates together. We're going to thread wires from the front panel, there's the front, through the back panel tube, which is this thing. So let's do that now. That's just a neat way of carrying these wires through. Okay, so you can see how that's going. So I'm not going to do I'm not going to do all of it yet. There's a couple of things to get right first. So we've got our wires threaded through the front panel. I'll take that one off. We're going to fit the silicon tube into the back panel. So let's just see how this is going to go. That's going to fold over like that. And then this tube is going to go in here. Now we have to thread these wires through first. And then the silicon tube goes in here. Again, a little bit of sort of twisting and pushing, and it just tend to just work its way in. Yeah, I can feel that going in. Okay, so that's in place. That's the silicon tube in the back panel. I run the wires through, so let's. Okay, that's 23. Now, 24 is to do thread the mixture wires and the bomb wires through the back panel hole. It's hole B, I've called it. Just put the mixture wires through by themselves because they don't have any strands sticking out. Right there, through. And then the bomb wires, they're a bit different, aren't they? They've got that bare wire at the end. Yeah, they're going through nicely now. So that's those wires in place. Now the separator plate. The separator plate goes with the flat bit down. And you can see how these pair. You've got the non-roundy and the non-roundy facing each other. So that goes like that. Moment of truth any minute now. So that's the separator plate done. Now we press the front and the back panel together. So the way we do that is we just pull through those wires that are, let me just move this across a bit, pull through those wires that are going through that connecting tube and let's get this thing out of the way, oh, let's put that there so the silicon's not in the way and just put them together. Okay, just pressing them together. There's not a great sense of things clicking into place. They're held close with the screws, but just have a look that nothing is sort of obstructing. Doesn't look like it. Okay, it says that we do this with six screws. We have four of the long, roundy ended ones. So let's get a couple of those in just to start holding it in place. Okay. And not this top one yet. That's going to have a P clip on it. Well, let's do that last. And this one here, this has 14 mil countersunk. This is the last of the, the others that make up the six. Okay, now let's sort out the P clip now. Get that 
that right. So that slide that down a bit like that so that it's coming out horizontally. Now just hold it in place as you nip it up or it would twist and tighten these. Everything tightened. That's a biggie. We've done number 26. Okay, so let's do 27. Attach the air screw prop knob or the air screw or the, or the prop lever knob to the lever. So there's the lever and there's the knob. Now it's going to go that way round and with the screw at the back. Okay, so that is a 10 mil. Yep, 10 mil at the back. And to the disc we have 6 mil. Okay, that's that. That's 27 done. 28. Fit the prop lever to the spacer. That's this. And the friction disc, which is this. And then fit it all to the mic hole. Right, that's a separate step. So we want that like that. And now note that there is a there's a right and a wrong way to do this. What we want is if you can see the D shape, the flat there, that's going to sit like that. So we want that upright for neutral position. So that determines how this goes. So we now want to use 14 mils to put this together. Don't heave on these too much. There isn't a huge amount of thread at the, uh, at the other end, but we've got four screws and it holds pretty well. Okay, that's good. And now we can fit all of that here. And that is a 8 mil. That's what that looks like. So now we have, well I didn't test the friction but it's great. So we've done 27 and 28. Now we have these little lugs. Now they're not meant to be handed, but they sort of turn out that they are. Um, so it's not obvious which is which, but just sort of clip them over and just see if the screw... No, that's slightly off. You're kind of looking to see whether the screw thread underneath is, is right. Yeah, that looks right. So that is an 8mm and it's one of these roundy headed 8mm. Okay, and then another one over here. And that's another roundy headed. Okay, so now we have a prop lever or an air screw. We have our throttle and our mixture. Pretty good. We've done the lugs. We're up to the RJ45. Right, wire up the RJ45 as per the video. Ah, this is the video. Okay, so what we need to do is join all the reds. Actually, you've got this diagram here that helps as well. Join all the reds, and we're going to use these little flange screws as posts for joining things. So we've got two of them because we're going to join reds and uh, blacks as well. So I'm going to take a generous amount off each of the reds Actually, what I'll do is I will I'll snip some off there. Don't need 
don't need that much there. And because I'm going to use that in a second. So now we have three reds that are bared. And then a fourth red is going to connect to them all. Let's put a little twist in there. Hook that under there. Okay, so that joins all those reds together. Now we're going to join blacks. So generous amount on the black there, generous amount on the black here. You can see on the diagram that we join the blacks. Let's unfasten that bomb wire. And there's two blacks. A little bit of black here. That's a third one. Put a little twist in it. Okay, so now we have a single black, which will go to our RJ45. Right, let's just connect them up. So let's just take a small amount of each one we've got eight wires now actually this yellow is a bit too long Okay, the order of things is, as per the picture, red. So that's the new bit of red. And then it is blue from B on the right hand side. Which is in fact the throttle blue. And it is blue from A on the left hand side which is the mixture blue. Then it is white, uh, then it's black, which is the prop combined with the bomb release button. Okay, now it's white from the right hand side, which is throttle white. Now, I didn't, that didn't clip down too neatly, I'm just Make sure we don't have stray wires. That's okay. Throttle white. White from the left, which is mixture white. Yep. Then green from the right, which is the air screw or the prop. So each time I'm just pushing the wire up till it hits the teeth and I want it to just sit over the teeth without any stray wires going a lot further or or falling short as well. Uh, nearly there, last one, the yellow, which is the bomb button, and that, a little bit more of a twist I think, and that goes there. That is everything. So that just slots in. And we have a back plate. And now we have a back plate. Now the back plate looks as though it could go any way, but actually there's a slope to this and no, that would be wrong, you see, the angles, whereas that would be right. So we'll just tuck these wires in. Probably easiest if you kind of seat it at the bottom first and then clip it in at the top. Okay, so we're, uh, we're done with that, we're here now, we're fitting the back box lid, it's got 40 mils and 20 mils, the 20s are at the bottom because they go all the way through the lid, the box and then into there. And then another 20 here, that holds that nice, and then a couple of 14s in the top. Ok, 
Okay, that's great. Very nearly there now. The visa doff. Very nearly there now. The visa dovetail. That's what that is. That's the quick release plate. And we have eight mils for that. And there we have it. In the next video, I'm going to show you the rig system where that slots on and also the trim wheel. But essentially that slots on vertically, uh, which gives you this 10 degree camber of the quadrant. And we've now got our prop action there, our throttle with the bomb release and the mixture. Magnificent. So I guess if you're still watching, you probably want to know how do you get your hands on one of these quadrants? This is how you do it. Go to authenticate.org, click Spitfire Mark 9 Kit, and you'll find a button to download all files. The one you need is Spitfire Mark 9 Add-on Kit B. If you haven't already got Starter Kit A, you'd better get that too. But initially I'd recommend just assembling the Universal Hub, as you'll need that for this trim and quadrant. Finally, there is one more video in this series, and I still need to show you how to wire the Universal Hub, so you can connect in the quadrant and trim wheel. It won't be long, but why not hit the subscribe button, and then you'll be the first to know when it's ready.